This is Brent with Likens Motorsports, and these are the heads for the 289 for the uh, Cobra replica. These are um, 1963 C3 AE heads. Date code is a 3J17. Really nice castings. Um, these have been fully machined, and um, we're going to send them out and have them ported. Uh, just a couple of things to show what has been done. The press-in um, studs have been removed and it's been drilled and tapped for screw-in rocker arm studs and guide plates. Uh, the spring pads have been milled down nice and flush so we can use a modern uh, spring locator um, such as something like that. Um, bronze valve guides that have been clearance to fit our Ferreira valves. And we're running uh, 175 intake and 15 exhaust. So these heads have been steel abraded. That's why they look like they've just been cast. Uh, very clean. Surfaced. Valve job has been completed. And um, be a nice foundation for, for port work. Let me get one flipped over so you can see the intake ports. Okay, so I'll show this as a baseline uh, so that we can see the changes that'll be that'll be made later on. Still has all the casting flash in it. Um, got this mark right there, and then down inside some stuff that needs to be cleaned up. And uh, we'll show. I'll have, uh, I'm going to send these to Joe Crane in San Antonio, and uh, he'll do his magic on them. And we'll, we'll get some uh, before and after numbers. So we did have a little bit of uh, development. Uh, we had originally planned to use a reproduction Blue Thunder Cobra intake, and um, we were able to locate the correct cast iron intake manifold for this setup, which adds, uh, in, in my, uh, I don't know if my opinion is worth much or not, but in my opinion, uh, adds a lot to, to the engine when you're using, uh, the entirety of the original parts. So we'll have that ported as well. Um, it's on its way. Well, it's probably not on its way yet. I just sent the payment in this morning, but, uh, it will be on its way to Joe and Joe can carve on that for us as well. But um, I've already uh, poured a chamber, um, and we've got our pistons ordered, and um, we're, we're well on our way now. So, um, for, I guess, uh, showing some progress sake, um, I want to show, uh, we're going to take some install height measurements real quick and just see what kind of valve springs we're going to need for this setup. Okay, so these are uh, just mock-up retainers. This is a titanium retainer, which doesn't really have a bearing on install height. Um, just the long as well. Let me back up and say it depends on which titanium retainer you use. But I'm, what I guess I meant to say is the material does not have a bearing on the install height. But these heads are pretty short on uh, valve length and, um, and install height. So... With a, a locator and a standard height retainer and some standard locks, we are at 1660. Um, so I can do a couple things to manipulate that. Um, I can add if I want more install height, but uh, I can I could put some plus 50 locks in here and get us up a little over 1700. Um, I was uh, had intended. To use some some beehive springs uh, at the beginning, but there's not a lot of choices in this install height for for beehives. So um, I do have some of these pack small diameter um, dual springs, and they use a really light and small retainer, and they also use. Since this is a seven degree retainer, they also use these real light seven degree locks. So 
um, when I check install height with this retainer and those locks, I come up with about 1715. Um, I'm going to check these springs for, for pressure to see what we have uh, at seat and at 600 lift. And I'm also going to mock up a retainer and locks and make sure, and I'll pop a seal on here just to make sure that we have enough retainer to seal clearance. Okay, so we have our pack spring and our manually retainer for that spring in there at 1715. And we have about 160 pound seat. Um, that does sound, I guess, to most guys to be a little bit on the high side for a small block Ford hydraulic roller, but I like to run a good bit of seat pressure. Seat pressure is what keeps everything together and it keeps the valves on the seats. Um, you don't want to get into any valve float situations or anything like that. And um, I mean, the valves are, are pretty light. We'll weigh some here in a second to see, but um, I like to see quite a bit of seat pressure. 160 doesn't, uh, doesn't bother me a bit. Um, so if we go to, let's see, 600 lift would leave us with one, 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 five. So we're gonna dial down to that. About 390 pounds of open pressure, which is good. Um, I like spring pressure, and um, that, that ensures that if somebody ha gets in a, uh, a kind of a wild mood and puts the loud pedal down for a little bit longer than what they should, that everything's going to stay connected. And this is well within the realm of our standard travel morel lifters on what they can handle. So I'm going to set these up at 1715 seat. One thing left to check is coil bind. Um, let's see, 1115. And these bind at uh, about an inch 50. So uh, about 65 thousandths coil bind clearance. And I'll go through and check the rest of them, but that is a, uh, a good spot to be in. So I'm gonna move forward, forward with this spring package. Um, they're not ready to assemble yet. Uh, we got to send them out to be ported and everything, but this is what I'm going to go with when they come back for assembly. Okay, we're going to weigh a couple of valves. Again, this is a Ferreo valve. Uh, standard small block forward length, uh, 1750 head diameter. Got a little bit of a dish in the, in the, in the head. 103 grams, pretty stinking light. 1500 exhaust. 94 grams again very lightweight valve package which is very good more parts weighing our little steel retainer 18 grams and uh, our spring and when i said small outside diameter dual spring when i say that we're you know we're used to thinking of inch 500 inch 550 dual springs this is an inch 290 and the spring is very light too. Okay, one thing, always need to check retainer to valve seal clearance. Obviously you need more than your lift. We have 600, about 600 thousandths lift and we have 675 thousandths clearance, which is more than enough clearance. So we're in good shape. I'm gonna go forward with this plan and um, just wanted to do some preliminary checkups. I uh, got some Race Tech custom pistons ordered with um, about an 8cc flat top. And uh, Mr. Nori needs to run on 91 octane, so we're going to aim for about 97, 9.8 to 1 compression. And uh, I can dial that in a little bit closer with a camshaft when it comes time for that. But um, we're, we're well on our way, and uh, we'll get these heads boxed up and shipped to Joe. Okay, here is our freshly ground crankshaft. This is a 289 crank. 
Um, it is my standard procedure to uh, just mock up the front and the rear bearing and uh, that'll give me a good idea of where I am for clearance instead of laying, laying all the bearings out, torquing all the, all the caps and all that sort of thing. So, so far um, I've measured first journal, we're at two inches, uh, 228 thousandths with a six. The number five is 228 with a four. We're at two inches and, I'm sorry, two inches, 0022 clearance. Uh, with a non-coated bearing and um, we will lose probably about four tenths or five tenths with the coating but I can gain that clearance back with polishing the crank and that's what I'll end up doing um, because I want to run I want to be at around this number um, when when final assembly occurs so I want to check this number five real quick and um, if it's around the same then we're gonna we're gonna roll with it and it is about two inches or I, I, I got two inches in my brain uh two thousandths and at about two or three tenths so um i'm gonna box these bearings up and get these shipped out to calico and um when they come back, we'll check it again and um, touch up the crank if we have to. So this is um, pretty much a stopping point for, for the weekend. Can't do much more until the pistons come in um, and we get our bearings back. But uh, we are making some, some steady progress. The heads and the intake will be sent to Joe and we'll get those back and they will be ready to assemble. I have uh, everything here in stock to put those together with and uh we're just piddling along so we'll we'll have a, a solid running engine here um hopefully in in several weeks however long it takes us to get some pistons in and the rotating assembly balance all right guys thank you for tuning in to another episode um i haven't had much time in the shop today i've been shipping uh, blocks and uh, dropping off parts and that sort of thing, but uh, it's nice to get in here in the cool and um, do a little engine work. Hope you can do the same this weekend on your own project. I've uh, been paying attention to what you've been saying on what our new dyno mule may be. Um, a lot of you guys are leaning towards big block Ford or a Cleveland. Um, I guess I have the, the final say um, but I'm taking all of that into consideration. Um, and, um, I don't know. I'm kind of thinking that we may be leaning towards another FE. I don't know. We'll see. All right, guys. Hope you have a good weekend. Make sure and hit that subscribe button and, uh, tell all your friends about Lycans Motorsports. Um, check out my website and my custom cam page. And um, remember that pretty much anything that you need to put a small block Ford, an FE, a Cleveland, or a big block Ford together, um, I can help you with that part selection and uh, got stuff in stock and can get other things for you. So let me know if I can help you out. All right, you guys have a good weekend. Bye.